All right, good morning, uh, replay watchers, replay viewers. Go ahead and slide it to the right if you're on Apple to share, share, share from the bottom to the top for Android to share, share, share. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Let's share this stream, share this stream. Today is the Money Game Q&A where you ask questions, uh, everything about money. So go ahead and share with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Go ahead and hit the paradue in the corner. We're going to get started in one minute. Hey, good morning, Green Tea. Good morning, good morning. Share, 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 brothers and sisters. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Let's go ahead and share. Hit that paradue in the corner. And let's share because we need for you to participate today. Today is Audience Participation Day with Q&As. Good morning with questions and answers, all right? So we want to make sure we uh, participate, because if you're serious about winning at the money game, I don't know how we're going to win if we don't participate, all right? There's no such thing. That means you're waiting for handouts. Go ahead and hit that pair, dude. Thanks for uh, inviting your followers, RFM61. Go ahead and put your name and where you're from, which city you're in. We're, we should be here to network with like-minded people, all right? So go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know which city you're coming in from. And let's go ahead and uh, get started here in 30 seconds. Go ahead and invite your friends. Hey, McCall, thanks for joining. Go ahead and tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're from. We need to know who who you are. All right, all right. We need to know who you are because we're going to get started in about 20 more seconds. Go ahead and share it right now. This is question and answer. If you have any questions about uh, money, investing, budgeting, Finances, anything about insurance, real estate, net, uh, network marketing, networking. All right. Think about what a uh, stockbroker. All right. Stocks and bonds and mutual funds. All right. We're going to cover that here if you ask those questions. Let's go ahead and turn everybody around. You see there that book by George Fraser, Success Runs in Our Race. Go ahead and get that. Go to DarylMohammed.net, hit book list, and you can. Click on any one of those books and go to the Amazon store and pick it up. All right. Welcome, you guys. Get in. Let's come on in. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let's come on in, you guys. Come on in and let's share, share, share. Let's double and triple and quadruple our count. Okay. Good morning, Sister Niambi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in, you guys. Come on in. We're right uh, at the top of the hour. As you know, I like to get started on time. Thank you for the invite. Get started on time, in on time, and give you a lot of content. So we need for you to share, share, share. And it really gives you an idea to qualify your friendship. So Southern California, all right. Never rains in Southern California, all right. Yeah, you want to be able to, um, to qualify your friends. Not judge them, just qualify them, right? If they get on the streams like this, then you should make a note of it. I do. Right? I do. I do. I'll tell you some of my, my secrets on how to build your list um, and, you know, how to how to build your, your the group of people and networking with groups of people. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. For those who don't know me, my name is Daryl Muhammad, real estate investor, mentor, coach, trainer, entrepreneur, networker, network marketer, used to be a, a, a stockbroker, and I'm in sales and marketing, sales and marketing professional. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm here just to share with you what God has blessed me with, uh, you know, from my years of studying, over 30 years of studying entrepreneurship and financial empowerment and investing, and in particularly what I learned as a stockbroker, what I learned as a stockbroker, and I learned more about mindset than anything else, all right, more about mindset than anything else. So uh, I want to share that with you, brothers and sisters, I want to share it with the black community, the black community, hashtag black dollars, hashtag black economy, hashtag black wealth, all right, hashtag black wealth, brothers and sisters, so that's what we want to do today, that's what these live streams are all about, we come here Monday through Fridays at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time to share with you just little things to hopefully prick your conscience, give you a paradigm shift so you can go out there and you can do the work. All right, we can come together in unity and do the work. 
That's the purpose of this live stream. If that's what you're about, we want to welcome you guys. We want to congratulate you for being here. And if that's really what you're about, about taking action, all right, then go to my website, DarylMohammed.net. Look around, and by tomorrow, I have my subscription box back up. But you can go ahead and click on comment and put your information in there. But go check it out. There's some good stuff on there, some previous uh, periscopes, and we're going to add some more of those uh, this weekend. So you want to go there to catch up on some of the other periscopes on the money game and some other things. All right. So thank you very much, Mrs. Neon Baby. So go there, check it out. And uh, when the subscription box goes up or you can put in the comment box your information, you'll go on a special list, a special list of those that want to unite and do things collectively. And we're going to have uh, some private uh, monthly events. All right, live events, either conference calls or webinars, but that's for those uh, subscribers, those members only. All right, if you want to reach me on, on uh, social media, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook fan page, and also now Snapchat. Brothers and sisters, you need to get on Snapchat. All right, get on Snapchat, learn how it works, especially I'm speaking really to those that are entrepreneurs, those that are in sales and marketing. All right, all right. So many times black folks catch the back of the wave, right? And wonder why, you know, they, they can't get all they can get out of it or all what, uh, get what has preceded them, <clears throat> excuse me, because we're on the back end of the wave, all right? So we have to start getting on the front of the wave or be the wave, right? And the only way you can be the wave, we can be the wave in unity. Working together, we can be the wave and create our own, our own wave. So Daryl Muhammad, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook is uh, Daryl Muhammad fan page, Snapchat at Daryl Muhammad, and go to YouTube, Daryl Muhammad. You'll see a lot, a lot of content there, uh, about 80 hours, I think, close to 80 hours of similar content there on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, put in my name, and uh, and you'll see, see what's there, all right? So, brothers and sisters, welcome, 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 The Money Game, TMG, The Money Game, TMG. The money game. Maybe I'll get some t-shirts and some hats like Mayweather. He got TMT on his. I get TMG. <laughs> All right, so today is Wednesday. Question and answer. Question and answers, brothers and sisters. If you have any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, about money, about investments, about network marketing, about real estate, about stocks and bonds and mutual funds, about the market, about the economy, I'll just share with you what, my, what I believe. All right? I'll share with you what I believe and give you hopefully a different perspective, give you a different perspective. So go ahead, if you have any questions, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm New York son, something like that. All right, uh, welcome whoever that is at, at Meerkat. I don't, I don't get the name. But anyway, so any questions, brothers? So we're going to open up for questions. We'll go as long as there's questions. What do you know or think about the option market? Well, options is not really... Option is one of them some synthetic manufactured investments. All right, it is. It doesn't. It's not an investment in and of itself. Like a stock is attached to a, a company, right? A uh, option is just the right. And options are also found in real estate. Option is the right to buy something, but not the obligation to buy it. That's the definition, right? So it doesn't really exist. Really, it's just a piece of paper. It's a contract. Right. And here's the thing, but see, we want to get into all the esoteric and and all these sophisticated, sexy investments. But the bottom root investment to the stock market. Is a company is a company. See, that's where we need to start. If we're going to start somewhere, start where you are, start where we are. And that's with basic understanding and with no experience and basic understanding at best. So if that's what we want to do, then 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 go and deal directly with companies. Companies. You can start with your own company, but then you have stocks. Right? You have stocks and you have bonds. See, those are those are the closest to the company than all these other extended. Uh, what's the best way to begin real estate? Oh, wholesaling, brother. See this course back here? This is my sister or brother. This is my course back here. Go to DarylMohammed.net. Click on the, 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 the poster or the, 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 the icon that you see there at DarylMohammed.net. And click and get free information there. Wholesaling by far is the best way to get started in real estate. Why? Because not, is, don't get caught up in the money. Thank you, sister. 
Don't get caught up in the money. Get understand first, right? Understand. You don't have to have full, complete, not know everything. That's an employee mentality. But understand, if you can invest in real estate, which has made more millionaires, multimillionaires, and billionaires than anything else in the history of the world. If you can do that with no money, no credit, no job, no risk. Wholesaling. Not rehabbing. Wholesaling. Everything else in real estate investing other than wholesaling has risk. Re requires credit. Requires somebody having a job. Right. So if you're going to weigh the two, well, of course, you make more money rehab because the risk is higher. Right. The risk is higher. Your, your odds to lose are greater. So you shouldn't make more money. See, but we get blinded by the odds to make more money or get blinded by the more money. And we ignore the odds. You always want to look at the odds. You only always want to look at your chances of losing. OK, what's at risk? All right. That's what you want to ask yourself. What's at risk? Any questions over there at Meerkat? Any questions at Meerkat? Good question. OK, so stock options. I answered that. Um, and then two stock options is a sophisticated strategy. See, it's not a strategy in and of it by itself. It can be. Right. But it was never meant to be. OK, stock options was a strategy to offset your long or short position. See, See, that's what I'm saying. We won't get an option, but do we know what long and short positions are? Right? Do we know how to cover our long position or cover our short position? Right? No, but then we just jump in and start studying options because you can make all this money. Oh, that's good, sister. That's good you do. All this money, right? And get lost in the mix. Here's the thing we talked about on a previous uh, live stream about risk tolerance. See, the further you get away from the basic fundamentals of an investment, right, the more risk, the higher your tolerance level has to be. So if you haven't played at this level, right, and haven't properly uh, 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 determined what your risk level is, but you hear about something way up here, and you spend all that money to invest in their training program, and then you invest up here, but you never determine your risk level at this, your risk tolerance level here. And up here requires much more risk tolerance. See, brothers and sisters, so it's a process. We as black people, when it comes to finances and money, we have to understand it's a process and go through the process. We don't want to stay here at the bottom all day, stay as consumers, understand there's a process, and don't try to skip the steps and go through the process. And that will increase your levels of success because you'll understand more and more the dynamic of things. And most importantly, or equally importantly, you understand your risk tolerance level and how to rebound from a fall. Right? They say it's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get up. Savings for emergency before you begin investing in income. Uh, what do you mean investing in income? What do, what do you mean, uh, brother, sister, when you say investing in income? What do you mean? Okay, sometimes you have the best to, well, you, you build up enough savings to go to the next step, investing your income. Is that what it is? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Investing your income. Well, you see, what you do is you save and look. Save and look. Right? You want to go on vacation, you want to go to some tropical island, right? Where you look, then save, right? You look, you get excited, then you start saving. And while you're saving, you're looking. Oh, man, you're looking at pictures, right? You're staying motivated. See, you got to stay motivated to save. You got to stay motivated to do something that you don't normally do until you don't need the motivation anymore. So you save enough and you look to see where can I invest my money. And you always want to be planting seeds. Buy a book. Go to a course. See, you can do that with small, you know, small amounts of savings. All right? So that's what you do. You save by books, by training, while you're still saving. And then you start seeing what it is that you need to invest in. Then you start seeing what you need to invest in. What if, what if you to now, what, what if you to invest now and don't have time to save? Oh, you have time to save. So you're about to lose your job. Well, 
Well, yeah, then you need your money for your expenses. I'll be right back, brother. Says I think I left my blender on. I'm blending my green juice, all right? I've been drinking green juice here recently. Let me go check something. I'll be right back. You guys introduce each other and get to know each other. Be right back. The beauty of live streaming. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, but okay, so that's uh, savings. If you don't have a job, then sister, you just got to do what you got to do to stay afloat, right? New York City. How New York City? Hi, Fort Worth. How's everybody? Okay, so all right. Any other questions? Thank you uh, for being coming back, sister Denise. I think it was. But any other questions? Money, stock market, real estate. Network marketing. Who's in network marketing? Shout out to network marketers. Who's out there in network marketing? Network marketers. Budget. New York City. Hey, Calvin. Welcome back, brother Calvin. Welcome back. New York City. All right. All right. New York City. Any other questions? What do y'all do for a living? Let me see if I can uh, give you some commentary around your profession. What do y'all do for a living? We probably got about another 10 or 15 minutes or so. All right, no questions? Let me just share with you. I met with my multi-million dollar, I'm in property management. Okay, property management, good. That's good. That's a good place to learn uh, real estate, uh, how to manage property. Uh, I learned the hard way, brothers and sisters, when you get into real estate and start buying and holding property, do not investigate. Do, I mean, do not manage your own property. Do not manage your own property. Get out of the poverty mentality of I, I can save $50 a month. All right. Own bakery. Own bakery. That's very powerful. Brothers and sisters, if you want to think of expanding, food is one of the major uh, areas of, of existence. Tutor through, tutor through freshman college. That's good. Uh, identify the entrepreneur sisters in the colleges and, and inspire them to become entrepreneurs. Inspire them to take... The, 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 the discipline and training from college and going into entrepreneurship. So as you tutor them, ask, ask them, have they ever thought about owning their own business? We have to breed more entrepreneurs in the black community. You know, we know we can't get caught up in mass media. I, I remember Medicare. All right, God love Medicare. But that's going to cut out pretty soon here, Sister Candace. But, you know, we got to love... You know, so mass media, you don't want to get caught up in mass media. You should be very, very suspicious of that, right? Very suspicious of that. Because if it's for the masses, it's to control the masses of the people, right? So, oh, I forgot my chain of thought. So here's what I learned. Oh, you know, the, you know, back a couple of years ago, Obama, I think, beginning of his second term, they're talking about, you know, create jobs, create jobs, create jobs, create jobs. You know, well, hence your question, you know... Create jobs, create jobs, create jobs. Here's the thing. You know what is the number way to create jobs? It's not just to say create jobs. It's not to come up, 
need to know what I should do to leverage a chunk of money. Well, there's a lot of ways to leverage a chunk of money or any kind of money. Chunk is relative terms. But, um, you know, I'm big in real estate. I mean, you, Damon Dash calls it this, flipping. Find something at one price and sell it at another place, price. That's the definition of flipping. Or you can invest in other people. You can invest in their ideas. My daughter is an entrepreneur and my grand. Daughter wants to be good, sister. That's what we need, uh, uh, Denise. That's exactly what you need. So on that point, the best way to create jobs is to become an entrepreneur and hire people. That's how you create jobs. You create jobs by businesses expanding, see? So when they go to the government, when they go to the president and tell them you need to stimulate the economy, you need to stimulate jobs, that means, you have to understand what that means. That means the government needs to do something to help businesses to grow so they can hire people. Now, if you're not in business, then that money's not going to come to you. You, If you may be losing a job, don't have time to save now, need to invest quickly. Well, if you, yeah, if you're about to lose your job, then you need to, you need to save for emergency. You need to save for what they call a, 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 a shortfall, income shortfall, right? So if you, if, you got, if you still have the regular income coming in, save it, all right, for the, for the shortfall in between jobs. God bless you if you can get a job before you lose a job. But you always prepare for if it doesn't go that way, all right? So that's how you create a job, brothers and So more black people need to become entrepreneurs in the traditional sense where you're hiring people, not online marketers, not so much network marketers, right? Network marketers, take your cash and invest in traditional business that hiring people, uh, you know, for a job. While we're working, we should save as much as possible. Save as much as possible. Hypothetical question. Yeah, save as much as possible. Absolutely, save as much as possible. Now, this question came up yesterday from Sister Candace when I called her and spoke with her. Um, tax season, right? You guys, most black folks are going to get a tax refund and they're going to go run out and buy stuff. Don't do that. They're dependent on that. For those of us who had enough strength at one point, okay, at, 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 we got to have enough strength as we did in the boycott for Christmas to do the same thing for uh, these tax refunds. Brothers and sisters, you and I have to start investing in ourselves. In ourselves. You can't ask the government to invest in us if we're not willing to invest in ourselves. We get 1.3 trillion, that's with the T, trillion dollars from this economy. That's more than, than, than the rest of all but nine other countries on the planet. See, so those that understand economy, those that understand you know, business and, 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 and markets and things of that nature, they look at black people's spending power as a, as, a, as, a, as a nation. See, we don't look at ourselves as a nation. We don't look at ourselves economically as a nation. We don't look at ourselves no more than the way we look at ourselves. But those that are wise, those that are about their money, Right? They're about tapping into markets and, and, and maximizing opportunities and where can they grow and expand. They look at the black community as being the tenth largest spending power on the planet Earth. So why would we be poor and why would we have to depend on Oprah getting money from other people, P. Diddy getting money from other people for Ciroc, and all these others that they prop up, brother and sister, even Steve Harvey. Right? Even them, I'm not, I'm not hating on them, I'm just saying, we got to stop this kind of dependency. May also, might be time for you to step out and become an entrepreneur. All right, yes, I started a nonprofit to teach young people financial literacy and entrepreneurship. That's good, brother. I don't like nonprofit organizations to be, from my perspective, brother or sister, because you don't own it. You don't own. We have to have ownership. Black folks, we, <laughs> we come out of slavery. We got to be like the Jews, right? The Jews put themselves in position that they, they made sure that that Holocaust will never, ever, ever happen again. You know how they do that? They do that by controlling money and controlling power. That's our prototype, brothers and sisters. I don't know why God will allow a prototype to be right there in our face and we refuse to follow it. We want to do everything else. We want to continue to go back to school and we want to do this. So I don't do entrepreneurship. I don't do a non-profit, I should say, uh, non-profit organizations. Why? Because you don't own it. You don't own it. And anytime the government can swoop down, say you're misappropriating the funds, 
take it over, give it to somebody else, might put you in jail, they might not put you in jail, the objective wasn't to put you in jail, the objective was to stop the good work that you were doing. That's it. Entrepreneurship, says Candace said, is a door opener. Well, at most, I'll see entrepreneurship as a as a as a as a way as a training ground to prepare you for for entrepreneurship. But we're not gonna do that because we I don't know if we ever do. I mean, I don't know to what extent we do that. Our entrepreneurship environment is suffering so much that whatever whoever uses that model of entrepreneurship. Interesting. Thanks. Use non-profit to go into entrepreneurship is still is, is still haven't been a drop in the bucket, right? See, we gotta get out this this mentality of non-profit. We need to be about profit. I started buying your course a few years ago. Awesome. Now looking to okay. Well, good, brother. Land trust, land trust or LLC. Well, you know, um, there's different different purposes for different tools, right? Different purposes for different tools, right? So land trust is something that's quick and easy and fast. And you have to understand it only serves a, 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 the purpose of anonymity. We take the path of lead. Yeah, anonymity, right? Whereas the LLC serves both. An anonymity and it uh, protects. It limits liability. LLC just gives you anonymity. It doesn't uh, limit your liability. All right? It doesn't limit your liability. All right? So it can, but it's not really. It can and it can not. Well, LLC um, definitely, without a doubt, can do that. Right? Can do that. And we'll get more to that on, on some of our live events. Uh, so make sure you go to DarylMuhammad.net. Uh, click comment, put your information in there until we get the registration up. But thank you very much for those kudos on the course. This is the course right here that the brother's talking about. If, you, if, you, if you're thinking about real estate investing, brothers and sisters, go to DarylMuhammad.net, get this course. No holds bar. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tip your toe around it. Go and get the course. See, we have to start patronizing each other. See, all this talking is cheap. That's why our community is all but dead. That's why they're shooting us down in the streets because we don't have enough... Conscious entrepreneurs, right? Conscious entrepreneurs, right? We got George Soros. George Soros is a billionaire guy that people say he's very questionable of, of his intentions. Now, he said several months ago he was going to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Why? Because we don't, $1.3 trillion, he's not even worth that much. Out of $1.3 trillion, we can't finance our own Black Lives Matter movement. So George Soros won't come and use it as a carrot. Now that's going to cause some disruption within the group. Because some going to say, no, let's not take it. Some going to say, yes, let's take it. Some going to say, no, I don't trust, you know, white people. Others going to say, you know, you, you know, they, you know, there's some good ones. I grew up with some. Like, just like some of us watching this live stream. Right? So it's going to be a division. Then it's going to be a break off. Then it's going to be another group. And he's going to finance that group. They, the, though, at that level, George Soros and those boys at that level, that's what they do to countries. So to do organizations like that is nothing new, especially our organization. COINTELPRO. Can somebody put that in the stream? COINTELPRO. If you don't know about COINTELPRO, then you really can't be an a black entrepreneur in America. Not a black one. You can be an entrepreneur that happens to be black, but you can't be a black entrepreneur. <laughs> Those are two different things. A lot of us and most of us are entrepreneurs that happen to be black. Thank you. That happen to be black. But we're not black entrepreneurs. We're not black first, then entrepreneurs. We're entrepreneurs, then black, see? Entrepreneurs and then black. That has to change. That's been the problem. That's been the problem. That's been the problem, brothers and sisters. Here at The Money Game, we want to make sure that we make a paradigm shift. I say we, that's me included. Make a paradigm shift and go ahead and make some things, make some serious waves, make some independent waves out there in the community. Stop depending on other people, right? We either going to be independent or we just going to play small, right? But we got to stop being out here. Kathy Hughes of TV One you know, most you know, most of that's owned by a uh, uh, white organization, white company. You know, 
So how, how free can we be? How bold can we be? I was talking to my, my millionaire friend, my multi-millionaire friend, Gerald Smith. And he and I have, he and I have these kind of conversations because he's a black businessman. Right? He's a black businessman, not a businessman that happened to be black. Right? So he and I was having that kind of conversation. He was saying how he wrote this article in the Chronicle, the Houston Chronicle, Justice is Good for Business, and how business people should get involved and, and, and help fund and help support the necessary change in, in black America socially. And he was saying how part of the largest business organization, Houston Greater Houston Partnership, which he sat on the board and he's on the board of Charles Schwab and, you know, all this other, but on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank here in Texas. This is a heavy brother now. He's a heavy brother. Right? So, and I'll share with you more in detail our conversation, but here's the point I wanted to make. I said, Gerald, you know better than I do. He was saying how the white people at the, at the, at the uh, 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 Greater Houston Partnership uh, recognized them at one of the banquets and stood them up and said, we support that which you wrote about and we support and agree with you. And I said, Gerald, you and I both know, right, that they'll support you way out here. But as, as the change gets closer and closer to affecting their pockets financially, they won't be able to support you. They won't be able to support you when it now affects their backing, their financial backing. I said, I heard that Walmart is one of the biggest investors of the prison industrial complex, meaning they invest their money in, in stocks of companies that own these private prisons. Right? See? So, so, so I said, so when you, when you get, as that progress continues, and now it starts to become an economic threat to them, they won't be able to support you anymore. That's, that's fine as long as you way out here. Right? But as you get closer to, and that's how we have to understand, brother and sister, in my job here at the Money Game to help you understand that that's where it is. It's about the money. Everybody will help you. Right? You see, we have to understand these things so we won't be so surprised, so offended, so disappointed. Oh, I thought he was with me. Yeah, but his finances was, uh, was uh, um, threatened. His finances were threatened. See, that's what makes the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan such a, a threat to an establishment. Because he and we get no money from corporations or big organizations, black, white, or indifferent. It's all grassroots money. That's called independence, brother and sister. So if you want to be independent, then you get money from the source. You get money from the source. That's what you do. If you're not getting money directly from the source, and you're getting all these people giving you big chunks of money, right? Just like black folks getting a business and go downtown and become a minority. What is it called? MBF, whatever it is, minority own minority business, right? So now you can get these these contracts set aside for minorities, which is a trick, right? That our p politician fell for. So you can't you can't trust them. You gotta keep a foot in their butt, right? You gotta keep a foot in their butt. So now we go down and we, we want to apply to get these minority, these contracts set aside for minorities. So you get one and that make up 50% of your revenue. I mean, what kind of independence is that? So as soon as they cut it out, as soon as they discontinue the contract, as soon as they start being slow on paying you your money, you not that's not freedom. That's borrowed freedom. What is that? That's borrow, that's temporary, that's contractual freedom. You're free on a contract. Right? You're free on a contract, brothers and sisters. So this is what we're talking about here at the money game. Question and answers. You're wholesaling or wholesaling. Well, um, I don't know. You 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 about to be uh gone sailing. Alright? Go get you a life, partner. Go get you a life. Right? You're you're a nothing, you're a nobody. You make no difference on this planet Earth. Like, uh, you know, taking that kind of position. But anyway, so question and answer. Any other questions, brothers and sisters? Excuse me for that, that rant. You know, I, I, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm an alpha male, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I, I slap them every chance I get. That's how I exert some of my frustration. So thank you. You always need some haters so you can exert some of your frustration where it belongs instead of taking it out on our poor black people who uh, don't deserve it. All right. So any questions, any other questions? 
All right. That's okay, brother. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Green Tea. Well, you know, hey, man. See, business is warfare. Many times black people can't, can't win in business because at some point in time in the greater society, or maybe not, just some point in time, it's going to get dirty, right? It's going to get dirty, which means people are going to use tactics that you question. You know, you're going to question if it's right. But it, you see, when it comes to business, you have to understand. I learned this from a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, he was the only manufacturer, only black manufacturer of city buses. His name was Danny Lawson. I don't know what happened to Danny. May God be pleased with him if he's not with us anymore. But Danny Lawson told me years ago, and I used to mentor with him, capitalist. He said, I'm a capitalist. And I thought about that. And I, and I thought about it and I figured what that means. A capitalist would do anything that's legal to make money. Not morally correct. Legal. Right? Good example. Bad example. But good example is pornography. Pornography is legal. So a capitalist will invest in that. But that's against mostly everybody's morals. Right? So that's the difference. And it's very hard for conscious black entrepreneurs, businessmen, to be pure capitalists. We have to be a capitalist to some extent, but pure capitalists. You invest in alcohol, you invest in guns, you invest in pornography, you invest in gambling, right? All these things, because it's legal, right? You invest in abortion clinics, because it's legal, Right? And you put morality off to the side. We don't have that luxury as black people. We just don't have that luxury. Not by choice we don't have that luxury. We don't have that luxury by default. By who we are and by whose we are. Right? And where we fall in the chain of humanity. Alright? In the chain of humanity. We don't have that luxury. The, the, the mom and dad don't have the luxury. Right? To do what the child does. Right? New, newborn baby poo-pooing in their pampers, right? That, that's acceptable for, for an infant, but that's not acceptable, right? At the level that, that we're on in the, in the, you know, on the, on the human chain, humanity chain, or the human chain, all right? So money, brothers, so we have to understand how this money thing goes. If not, we'll get played. You know why we'll get played? Because this money game, this trickery in the money game, right, has been played on us Longer than we've been in the game, so that the trickery has more experience at tricking people than you and I have at not being tricked. Does that make sense? So you can come along and be as smart as you want to be, but the game, the money game, the trickery of the money game, or the money game, the trickery in the money game, because ain't nothing wrong with the money game, the trickery in the money game. It's been around longer than you and I. It's smarter than you and I. That's why we have to have morality in our, in our capitalism. So God can help us get through and get past and beat the experience, tricks, and trickeries of the money game. So they, they give money to, to, to our entertainers, to Steve Harvey and, 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 and Russell Simmons and, and all those to control them. Right? Because they know you're going to increase your lifestyle, which I would too. Right? You're going to increase your lifestyle. Then you're going to be dependent on a certain amount of money to maintain that lifestyle. And then they threaten you with that life. From, from, you know, they threaten you with that lifestyle to take it back from you. So they look like giants before our eyes, but they're really midgets. And I'm not judging them. It's good. I mean, it's better than what you and I are doing. Right? But here's what we need among our black entertainers in, in, in uh entertainers in that that's fortunate like that Oprah and, and Steve Harvey and others. You all gotta be like in Prince. That's my boy, my favorite. And he do some things, but here's the point I'm making. And Russell Simmons, he was in Flint, Michigan. So we're not judging, we're just understanding how the game is played. See if we get out of this emotionalism, oh he don't like he don't like Steve Harvey. Because he said such and such. No, you, that's not what that means. That's understanding the game because you got to understand in chess and checkers, there's just pawns in the game.
the pawns will change. See, those, those, those that use those strategies to control our economy. It's about e controlling an economy. They do it around the world. American government and its policy control uh, economies, rob economies of countries. So what you so this ain't nothing for them to do that with 30 to 40 million black people. That's easy. They practice on us, I guess. And they're gonna try that away, or they do it over there and bring it and try it on us, right? So so we're just understanding the game, see? Because when you get out of minor league, you work your way up to major league, that's that's different. You, you gotta understand things on a whole different level now. If not, then you default back to the minor leagues because you, could, you couldn't operate that high. The oxygen was too thin. And I want to just share with you what I've picked up, bits and pieces, that you all would never get. Right? You all would never get. Not enough of us will ever get. Not education, get that on every corner. But the inside understanding, the inside uh, concepts and ideas and secrets... You only get that from one one source. You only get that from one way, from somebody being in the inside or you being on the inside. See, being able to sit down with, with Gerald Smith, man, everybody don't get an opportunity to sit down with one of the largest black-owned investment firms in the country, and he kept on saying, I'm private, I'm private, I'm private. He kept on telling me that. Hint to the wise is sufficient, I'm private. Right? He said, I was able to write that article and have no pushback in so many terms, he said. He said, Daryl, because my money doesn't come from the Houston market. That's a hint. That's an aha moment, brothers and sisters. He said, they can't touch me. That's exactly what he said, quote, unquote. They can't touch me. And my response was, they'll kill you. <laughs> but he meant economically, right? He, they can't touch me because I don't get my money from Houston. I get my money from around the country. So that's a strategy. See, so that gave his his consciousness independence. Because a lot of our black entrepreneurs have consciousness, but they it's not independent consciousness, right? They can only do little stuff for feed the homeless and do a little program for the boys and and all that's good. But we ain't we ain't uprooting this thing. Independence, that's not independence. Well, his is not global. His is all U.S., U.S. dollars. But it's not Houston, which means, Sister Niambi, is that if he piss off somebody in business and politics in Houston, they just can't call up their homeboy, right, somewhere down the street and, and do like they do Minister Farrakhan, lie on him and make him look like a, a villain and a demon, and they pull money from him. See, they still can do that, but it's going to take a whole lot more effort, a whole lot more collaboration, and then there might there not be there might not be any agreement along the way from those the, the other people that need to participate to cut off his money. All right, so that's what we have to that's what we have to understand. So we're just talking about this so we can understand, brothers, the game that's being played out here, because we just run up in it blindly and get stuck, right? And you face with economic death or physical death. See, you just can't judge people. See, I've learned over the years, stop judging athletes and young thug and, and, and Lil Wayne and all them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's apparent what they're doing is crazy. But those of us who are religious, right? Those of us who believe in the Bible, aren't those the kind of people that Jesus went to? So how are we going to judge them? It's not for us to judge. If we're not going to help them, then keep your mouth off the people. Off of our, our people. Our young black people. Because they got something that you and I don't have. And they got what it takes for us to be free. So who are we to talk about them? If all they got to do is pull up their pants and we'll be free, then that's a whole lot more than what you and I have to do to be free. All right? They're not afraid to die. Because they're dying and killing every day. See, we are still, we're afraid to die. We're afraid to lose our house and lose our home for what we believe in. We're afraid about what white folks going to say. They don't care about what white folks going to say. So we can't judge people when they have to be faced with making a decision that's going to affect them economically or physically. 
It's going to bring them economic death or physical death. That's not something that's to, for us to say, oh, well, see, see, he's sell out. He probably sold, but that's easy for us to say because we're not even at that level to where even be threatened, right? Well, our, our economy, personal economy, and, and our life would even be threatened. So what's our reference point? Let us get to that level, right? Let us get to that level and experience that. Then maybe we can be authentic in our criticism, right? So what is your question, brothers and sisters? Question, question, question. I thought I'd do that where over time, but I just wanted to share that with us, that was all my spirit, so I wanted to share it with you over there, Meerkat. Thank you, Living Sheik, for being here in Char Chorizo. Chorizo, I think that's right. Thank you for being here and restreaming. This is about hashtag black dollars, hashtag black economy, hashtag black wealth. Black wealth. That's what this is about. So if you hashtag that, right? But when you go inside the store, go inside the live stream, that's not what it talks about. Just imagine you, you were looking for... You went to San Francisco, a place you've never been before, and you went to Chinatown, which is the largest population of Chinese uh, in in the oldest Chinese Chinatown, oldest chi Chinese area in the country where I'm from, San Francisco. Just imagine, so you go to Chinatown, you say, man, I'm going to go to Chinatown, eat me some authentic Chinese food, and you roll up on a restaurant and you say, Chinese food. But then when you go inside, you sit down, you get the menu, Right? And only one third of the items are Chinese. The rest is American. Got barbecue. Got buffalo wings. You're like, man, I, want, I thought I was coming into an authentic. I'm in Chinatown. All the street signs in Chinese. This one's in Chinese and English. Say Chinese restaurant. I go in. I'm expecting everything on the menu to be Chinese. Probably except from the, except from the soda and the uh, coffee or something. But all the food I expect to be Chinese food. So when we say hashtag black dollars, black economy, black wealth, when you come to this live stream, you should expect to see nothing but exclusively black wealth, black economy, black dollars. Right? So that's why we take a strong, such a strong opinion and position when it comes to those, those knuckleheads and those trolls. Why? Because we told you what this is about. Don't go into a Chinese restaurant talking about, what a, what a damn uh, buffalo wings up in here. They're going to call the police and get your butt out of there. Because you ignorant and you stupid. And you came in to start trouble. This said Chinese restaurant and you're going to come in here and interrupt the conversation you know, and disturb the waiter, and disturb the cooks, and disturb everybody talking loud and talking about where 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 the hamburgers, where the McNuggets. What about the McNuggets? People talking. What about white folk? What about the McDuggets? This is a Chinese restaurant, partner. You you ask for Chinese food, or you go down the street to McDonald's, right? They're not gonna tolerate you sitting there. What about what about French fries? Y'all got French fries back there in that piece? <laughs> right? They ignore you. No, they just ain't paying me no attention. That's what the trolls they ain't paying me no attention. So money, brothers and sisters. So that's our position here, and that's what you're about. Go to DarylMuhammad.net, click comment, put your information, click book list, buy you a book. Right? Click some of the periscopes, some of the other uh uh, uh blog posts there and comment, comment, comment. Open a food location versus having your food products available. Uh, to others, open a food location. See, brother, sister, here's that's a good question. You always want to start like my real estate course. Start with low overhead, low cost, and low risk. And that's definitely not open up your own restaurant. See, a lot of times, like I said, we see we we I don't know what's wrong with us. We just want to jump. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking to you for those of us because see, it's a mindset shift. It doesn't matter if it's real estate, it doesn't matter if it's restaurant business, it doesn't matter if it's open up a barber school, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It's still the same thing. Overhead, you know, expenses, right? So crawling before you walk. Not crawl too long, baby crawling, he's five years old, something wrong, right? So crawling before you walk. So you take the next step because you're going to make mistakes, things that you calculate is going to be wrong, right? And if you take small steps... 
then you can fall and get back up because you only lost a thousand dollars on that deal. But if you open up a restaurant, get permits, build it out, get the equipment, get all this stuff, then 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 see, then we don't even advertise because we ain't got no money left, or we just don't understand the power of advertising. Right? So we just open up our doors, put a sign on the sidewalk, and expect people to come in, right? And if that don't work for two and three, four months, you out of here. Or you're in thousands, thousands, and thousands and thousands worth of debt. I would get a product, learn how to sell. Go to DarylMuhammad.net, hit book list, and buy one of those books on selling. If you're not first, you're last. Get that book. Get your product, low overhead. Get your product, low startup cost. Get your product, go out and sell. Sell it to the stores. A good friend of mine, Mike Moe here in Houston. Right? That brother there, man, he got his, his barbecue seasoning or his seasoned sauce in the major stores here in Houston. Right? That's, then you build relationships. You learn how to sell. You learn how to market, which is more important than anything else in business. Right? You learn how to raise little money so you can get your products developed. Right? Instead of struggling to raise just enough to open up the store, but you don't really have enough to get the kind of equipment you need and all that kind of stuff. And all that affects your business. Right, but I read, I got a hundred thousand. I can just jump into into uh, open up a store. What well, I mean, just because you have the money, money alone doesn't guarantee you success. If anything, it only guarantees you opportunity. But once you get in that opportunity space, then you can bust bust your face, fall and bust your face, and lose all your money. Right. So I would say start small. You know, you have just look at some companies out there don't have restaurants. They have C's. They mean they're making. Hundreds and millions of dollars in revenue just with seasoning. Where's our black equivalent? We got a whole lot of black restaurants, but then we turn around and buy seasoning from those that don't have a restaurant and making hundreds and millions of dollars in revenue just by selling seasoning sauce or a food product. That's what I would do. All right, good question, brother or sister, whoever that is. Hopefully that helped. Let me know if that helped you out a little bit, all right? What we have to do in a part of question and answer and why you need to participate, you need to come up with a question. See, black folks have to learn how to question. Most of us never asked questions in school, so here we're grown now. We don't know how to ask questions, right? We don't know in the process of learning how to ask questions. You start off with maybe dumb questions and you keep on asking them until you get better and better at questions and your mind gets trained at asking questions. We have to train our mind to ask questions. Because if we don't know something, it means that we should have a question. Thank you, sister. Thank you very much. You know, it should mean we have a question. If you don't know, you should have a question. You can't not know and don't have a question. <laughs> I'm trying to get to California. Do you know how to get that? No. Do you have a, any questions on how to get there? Nope. <laughs> I'll be, I don't understand how that, how that works. <laughs> but, you know. We're growing. We're 460 years uh, <laughs> deficit at minimum on this thing called freedom, free enterprise, capitalism. We're, we're new at this. We're, we're new at this, brothers and sisters. So we have to be patient with ourselves, right? We have to be patient with ourselves. So any other questions? Good question. We, we went over, but hey, sometimes you got to do that just to see who's here, right? It's a weeding out process. It's a sifting. So sell your product. Learn how to sell. You got, let me tell you something. Learn how to sell. A, a, a professional salesperson will never starve. Some always need to be. Oh, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton is a salesperson. She's trying to sell you on her vote. Uh, on your vote. Donald Trump, they're all salespeople, but she wouldn't say she's a professional salesperson. She's a politician, but she's a salesperson. She's selling. She's selling. See, here's another uh, money tip. You can't make money at something that you despise or, re or, 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 or um, you, you, you despise. You have negative feelings towards. You can't make money in, in something or it very limits your money. And you can't make money in something if you despise the very nature of it. The very nature of business and making revenue is sales. But you hate sales, but you're going to invest in the business that depends on sales. See, it's, it's too many too many things going against each other. If you're going to win at the money game, you got to love sales. 
just so you can better understand things. See, so now when you look at an opportunity, now you're looking at it from the understanding of sales. I understand sales. I'm not a professional salesperson, but I love sales. I understand I won't have anything. Nothing would exist if it wasn't for a salesperson. So I'll be stupid to talk bad about salespeople. Dumb. Wouldn't have a cell phone. Wouldn't have nothing. Wouldn't have you wouldn't have my, my tablet I'm on. Just That's just crazy. You don't curse the hand that, that feeds you with convenience, that feeds you with technology. Who? I mean, that's not intelligent. That's not intelligent, brothers and sisters. So that's what we have to understand. Sales. Love sales. Get that book. If you've never been in sales, don't want to be. I shouldn't say don't want to be in sales. But not in sales. Won't be in sales that you can see because that's just not the direction you're going in. Then... uh Hey, hello from Russia. Then um, then get that book. Go to DarylMuhammad.net, hit book list, and get uh, Sell or Be Sold. That's for non-sales professionals. Sell or Be Sold. Okay? We got about another five minutes. Brother says another five minutes. Any other questions? Questions. Questions. Everything about money. Everything about money. Any other questions? No, don't speak Russian. All right? All right? Any, any questions? Any questions about business? Money, finance, entrepreneurship, um, you know, don't, don't, don't do politics. Um, so any questions on network marketing, uh, networking with people, all right, that's something that I enjoy, I take a lot of pride in, networking and connecting with people, all right? Uh, so, so go ahead and ask any questions that you have, because we're going to get off here in the next three minutes, all right? Any other questions about money? So we're talking about asking questions, understanding that you should ask questions. Ask questions. All right? Ask questions. When you ask questions on this level, then when you meet people on a different level, a higher level, you already have the mindset of asking questions. No longer will you be saying, I'm scared. I don't have any questions to ask. Right? I don't have no questions to ask. What organization do you recommend joining? Uh, I don't know. In reference to what? Business, I guess. Uh, uh, join your local... Well, there's so many. Uh, meetup groups, right? If you're looking to network, meetup group. Thank you, business. If you're looking to network, definitely meetup groups, right? Where there's people of like minds. Where there's people that, that you want to connect with. People that are at a higher level than you. You don't want to... Just say don't want to. But you don't want to network with folks at your level or below. For business now, this is business, ain't this ain't emotionalism. This is business. You want to network up. Network up. Always network up. Not network even. Network up. So meet up groups, your local black chamber of commerce. You know, if you belong to the fraternity or sorority, if they have mixers, you want to go where the people are that you're looking for. If it's a consumer base, that's a different group. Right. If it's if you're looking for other entrepreneurs, then that's a different group of a pure consumer based group. Right. They have these wedding uh, 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 bonanzas, you know, for folks getting married and stuff. That's where you might go if you look at <clears throat> if you're looking to promote your products to <clears throat> in consumers. OK, so in business, you always have two. You're looking to connect with in consumers or you're looking to con connect B to B. B to B, business to business, or B to C, B to consumers. So based on what you're trying to do, Bliss, that's that will determine what group. And meetupgroup.com is always good to start. All right. But there's groups all over the place. The bigger your city, the more groups. Just get started. Just go to a group. Right? Just go. Just go. Because it's a learning process. See, the thing about this money game and entrepreneurship that really gets me with with us. We procrastinate as if we know exactly how long it's going to take for us to be successful. See, that's that school mentality. That's that that's that employee mentality, right? Here, you, you take all these classes, it should take you about a year, and then you'll be finished, and then you'll be, get your degree, and you'll go, go and get a job. When it comes to the money game and entrepreneurship, you know, it don't work like that. You can't see, okay, well, I can't start in September, but I can start in August. And then if I start in August, I'll be finished next August or whatever the timeline is, right? We we don't have that luxury. I mean, it don't work like that when it comes to the money game. It doesn't work like that with entrepreneurship. That's why true entrepreneurs understand they got to get started now. And they got to get started every day. 
It's an everyday thing because they don't know how close they are. They don't know how far they are on their journey. Right? It's just like any other long journey. When you get closer, then you start seeing the city. If I'm driving from here to San Francisco, I don't see San Francisco on I-10. No matter how flat it is, I'll never see it. But as I continue down I-10, right, the, the less stops I make, right, the fewer stops. Depending on how long I stay, when I stop. Then as I get closer to San Francisco, then the, the skyline, they call it, starts appearing as I get, get closer, right? But until then, you just push it. You just push it. You just push it until you can start seeing your goal and your destination. And that should give us the energy and the motivation and enthusiasm to push even harder. Because now we can see our, our goal line. Okay? All right? So that's it. So that's why we want to have question and answers on Wednesdays. And we'll probably go over on Wednesdays to help us, to give us the opportunity to ask questions. You have to ask questions, brothers and sisters. You have to ask questions. If you are here and you are serious about the money game and you're serious about economic empowerment for black people, then how can you not have a question? Many of y'all are about to get your tax returns and you don't have questions. You have tax returns that you're about to get and, and, and you need to know what to do with it. You don't go buy things. right? Invest in your head. Pay off some of your debt. Get the credit card debt out of the way. Right, because you're gonna need that credit card debt to invest in some books and some courses that's gonna teach you about the money game and entrepreneurship. Right, get those consuming those those consumer items off of your credit card and leave your credit card for your advancement in the money game. Because that's what wealthy people do. They use credit. To invest in something that's going to give them a greater return on investment than the 18% interest that they're paying on their dollars. Your purse, your shoes, your suit, whatever it is at the, at the restaurant does not bring you a return of, of anything. It's a zero net return. So that means your money is losing power at the interest rate of that, you, that you're paying on your on your um on your credit card and that's not considering that compounding effect by you not paying it off when that credit bill comes but you're carrying that debt to next month because we're paying the minimum so you're paying 18 percent compounded over time you can't win at the money game like that brothers and sisters you never win. You can't swim fast enough. You can't run fast enough. You can't work fast enough. You can't get extra hours enough. You can't get enough education. You can't get enough job. You can't deceive that game. That's a losing game. And I'm here to help you understand. And maybe we'll do one on credit. And understanding you got to. If you're going to win, you don't have a choice. See, that's one thing beautiful about certain areas in life. Right? Certain areas like the money game. You don't have no choice. You either play by the rules or you lose. You either play by the rules and win or you suffer. Right? There is no in, in between. The government not going to be here to give you any money here in the next couple of days. My prediction is you wait until Obama leave and then we'll see how much love. Well, not how much. but We'll see, <laughs> you know, how much love the government got for black and poor people. You, you just, we've just seen the beginning of it. You wait until Obama get off. And they can't wait till Obama get off out of office. Right? And they're going to do whatever they can to enrich themselves, those at the top, to enrich themselves and their friends. Because they know in their lifestyle, their children's lifestyle, their grandchildren's lifestyle, this debt cannot be paid off. So when, when, when the debt is that deep, and can't be paid off for your great grandchildren to your great grandchildren to pay it off, then they, they got another plan. They have to have another plan. If not, they're passing on that debt to their children. So what are they doing? They're looking out for them and theirs only. Not the community, them and their family and their crew only. And they're trying to get as much money as they can. And see what you and I don't know, a lot of those those folks got Houses in other countries, right? In other countries. So when this thing really blows up and goes up in smoke, 
Their objective is to get the hell out of America and go sit on their estate somewhere while you and I, who haven't prepared, who too busy in elementary and junior high, right, are not doing the same thing, make, making major moves for what's inevitable, which is the fallout of this economy, so we can get something. I, PrivateIslands.com, I've been getting their emails for years. They got islands off the coast of a million dollars. You can have your own island. I ain't got a million dollars. But enough of us get together. See, we forget <laughs> that we're one point trillion dollars and everybody comes to get rich off of us because of our disunity. Four, five, six of us who's serious about this money game and going to put our life on the line to get it or die, like 50 Cent says, in the next five years can have enough to go get a million dollar uh, island. So we can have some refuge, somewhere to go. See, that, that, see that's out of the paradigm shift for black folks. Because we too busy, you know, we too busy trying to invest in this thing. You invest something, you invest in something to get out of it something so you can do something else with it. We just invested to get the money out to go buy a car. Invested to get the money out to go buy, you know, some $300, I don't know, perfume or something. We supposed to die. <laughs> in in war, you supposed to die. When when time of war, we supposed to have right, sister. Absolutely. In the time of war, we supposed to have an arsenal of weaponry. We got arsenal of clothes and things and flat screens and cell phones and getting a new cell phone just come out and all this other kind of foolishness. But it's not for the masses. It's for the few. And I hope that you're one of the few. And I pray. Then I'm one of the few. That's why we're here on these live streams. You know, I don't think there's another live stream that comes close to hashtag what we're hashtagging in, in, in the way we're saying it unapologetically. Right? A whole lot of folks can be strong in private. You know, a person to be a totally different person in private meetings. That's how our enemy tricks us. He's different. He's the opposite in private. You think you think Hillary Clinton is who Hillary Clinton is in public and private? If you believe that, then then yeah, then I got a whole bunch of stuff to sell you, right? Because you don't know what to do with your money anyway. You're going to be tricked out of your money, right? If you think Donald Trump is who Donald Trump is in private, right? Then you're drinking the Kool-Aid. You might be even swimming in it. You might be even be selling the Kool-Aid. I mean, you're promoting that, that foolishness. Because you're not the person you are in private. That you are in public. That's why these live streams and Snapchat. Find me on Snapchat. Daryl Muhammad. Snapchat is so powerful. Now you can see DJ Khaled in his house. Right? Now you can see Gary V playing basketball every morning. Six o'clock in the morning. You don't see that in, the, in his studio at his... Transparent others are hiding. Right, he's more transparent. So you can still even imagine how much more turned up he is <laughs> in private if he's like that in public. It's not to say you're bad, but just know that that's, those are dynamics that, 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 are, uh, that are present. Right? Stop judging. Those are dynamics. Right? I curse when I'm in private. I don't do that on these live streams. I don't, you know. I'm not a sailor, but he feel more comfortable in private, right? That's only natural. I, they, I heard a, a saying, and I'll leave with this. They say character is not who you are in public. Your character is who you are when nobody's looking, when you're by yourself and nobody's looking. That's who you really are, right? Good or bad or indifferent. It's not for anybody to judge or determine that but you. All right. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Denise Tudor, for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Meerkat, for hanging in there one an hour and some over. But it looked like that's just the nature of these, uh, these, this question and answer on, on Wednesday. So Friday is Freedom Friday. Tomorrow we'll bring you another message. So show up tomorrow to find out what that message is. We're talking about the money game, how to play the money game to win and not to lose. We have to know the rules and the mindset of the winners. 
So with that being said, brothers and sisters, thank you for being here. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Go to DarylMuhammad.net, look around, buy a book, because I know who's buying the books. Buy the books, right? Click on and open up a free gold account. You can do that on DarylMuhammad.net. Oh, the AbleNetwork.com, the AbleNetwork.com, FreedomPaperCompany.com, right? Go ahead and put that in there, somebody, please. And then last but not least, EconomicBlueprint.org. It's time to circulate our money. That's what we're doing here in 2016 on these live streams and every platform we're using. We're giving you something specific to do. And if you don't do it, that says more about you than it does about those companies. All right, the AbleNetwork.com, FreedomPaperCompany.com, and EconomicBlueprint.org. Put your money where your mouth is, brothers and sisters. If not, you're not saying anything anyway. So we'll see you at the top, not from the top, because you, your family, but most importantly, our black community needs your very best. All right, stay strong. Don't let anybody sway you from hashtag black wealth, black dollars, black economy, because that's what time it is. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Take care. God bless.